Heaven is so real by Chu Thomas. This CD is a summary about the reality of heaven. Senior Pastor Yonggi Cho translated by the Chu Thomas book into Korean. Mrs. Chu Thomas is a Korean American. Heaven is so real to the author because of her encounters with Jesus Christ. This book reveals the personal story of Sister Cho Thomas, who traveled to heaven with Jesus 17 times during a period of seven years. I have read this book several times, and I have received a lot of insight about heaven with great blessing. Please do not consider this a theological thesis or a book on doctrine. Just listen and enjoy it as the author's personal experience and testimony about which he has seen and heard in heaven. Whether you are a Christian or not, Heaven is So Real is a very moving and inspiring story, which you should listen with an open heart. It will help you understand more fully the great blessings that God has prepared for His children eternally in heaven. 1. The Lord's Presence I can see the Lord's mouth moving when He speaks to me. His stature and build make Him appear as if He is a young man, perhaps between the ages of 30 and 40. His height, it seems, is approximately 6 feet. 2. There are flowers and fruit trees. I'm happy to know there are flowers in heaven. They had the most lovely blossoms I have ever seen, and they seem to grow brighter and more colorful as we approach the entrance to the large, white palace we had been walking toward. In flowers of every type and description formed a sea of beauty everywhere I looked. I noticed that a variety of fruit trees grew close to the rock wall. These trees were filled with the brightest, most luscious-looking fruits I'd ever seen. They were ringed by a magnificent profusion of lovely flowers. 3. The Lord's Warning Jesus Went On Many people think I will never come for them, but I tell you, I am coming sooner than they think. When he said this, the tone of his voice changed. He seemed to be almost angry, or at least I sensed a great urgency in his words. It was a warning. It was a message I had to share, and share now. The end times are truly upon us. Jesus is coming soon. 4. The Only Ones Who Can Come in Heaven Jesus assured me after we arrived in heaven during the early hours of February 29th. The only ones who can come here are the ones whose hearts are as pure as the water. The Lord reiterated the invitation He extends to all who want to follow Him and have an eternal home with Him in heaven. The only ones who can come here are the ones whose hearts have been made as pure as the water. 5. Heaven's Mansion in Gowns and Crowns Jesus took me to one of the dwellings, it was a white mansion, sumptuously landscaped with a profusion of colorful flowers and leafy trees. The most wonderful flowers I'd ever seen graced the doorway. The doors were lovely as well, decorated with extraordinary stained glass panels. Inside the palace, everything was colorful and shiny. The great room was filled with people who were wearing beautiful gowns, and each person was wearing a crown that was set with jewels of every variety. 6. The Lord Instructed I do not want you to miss anything I show or tell you. He instructed. Nothing more, nothing less. Everything has to be exactly as I reveal it to you. 7. Heaven's Fruitful Orchard He led me to a fruitful orchard. It was huge, and every row of fruit trees was in a perfect line. Each tree was laden with ripe, luscious fruits. They all produced a different kind of fruit. The orchard was so vast that it seemed endless. The Lord picked an oval-shaped purple fruit and handed it to me. Then He did the same with a round, deep red fruit. 
8. There were some people standing on a barren site, outside the gate of the kingdom. The Lord took me to a barren site outside the gate of the kingdom, and showed me many people wearing sand-colored robes were in this region, standing very close together. And I noticed that they looked forlorn and lonely, even though they were in the midst of so many others. 9. Huge White Mansions the next stop on our heavenly itinerary was the white mansion, where Jesus had taken me before. Again, I noticed that inside the great room were numerous men, but very few women. Who are these people? I asked. These are people who sacrificed for me. 10. Jesus is coming very soon. He went on to remind me. I am telling you all this and showing you these things, so you can tell the world. Then he reiterated the importance of all these experiences by saying, I know that a lot of my children don't think I will come back for them for a long time. Some even think I will never come back for them. But I want you to tell them that my kingdom is ready for those who are ready and waiting for me. I am coming very soon. 11. All sorts of animals. This was heaven, and it was more beautiful than I had ever imagined it could be. I could see animals of all sorts galloping and playing among the trees. I particularly noticed a spectacular deer that looked so strong and healthy. I noticed that these animals, which would usually be considered wild, were playful with one another. It was like a scene from Disney's Bambi movie. 12. The Lord has prepared homes for you. As I turned in another direction, I noticed a beautiful river. Along the river was a rock wall, and magnificent dwellings were situated on the left side of the river. Many of these homes looked like castles, where only the very wealthy might live. The Lord said, These are houses for my special children. I was very curious about this place, but the Lord didn't take me closer to it. He only showed it to me from the top of the hill and from a very far distance. Beholding that sight, I realized the truth of His word. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. There was a time when I wondered if this was simply figurative language, symbolic of heavenly things. Now I know those mansions and castles are real, and the Lord has already prepared them for us. More importantly, He wants us to be with Him there forever. 13. The Pit of Hell The Lord took me to another place outside of heaven. I looked over the crest of the mountain. I could see fumes and dark smoke rising from a deep pit. It was like the crater of a volcano, and inside I could see flames scorching a multitude of people who were screaming and crying in the kind of agony that only the severely burned truly know. The people were naked, without hair, and standing close to one another, moving like worms, and the flames were scorching their bodies. There was no escape for those who were captured, and the pit its walls were too deep for them to climb, and hot coals of fire were all around the edges. Even though the Lord did not tell me this, I knew I was standing at the brink of hell. It was even more horrible than the description the Bible gives. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Throughout the Gospels and the book of Revelation, Jesus was careful to tell us about the horrors of hell. The flames would leap out unexpectedly from all directions. 
people would move away, and then as soon as they seemed to think that they were safe, another fire would burst forth. There was no rest for these unfortunate victims of sin. They were doomed to spend all eternity being scorched and burned as they endeavored to escape the flames of hell. I asked, Who are these people? My daughter, these people did not know me. He made this statement with a voice that heaved with grief. I could tell that the Lord was not pleased by the sight in front of us. It bothered him deeply. I knew that he had no control over the destinies of people who deliberately chose to reject him. These were the ones who were writhing in pain and suffering in the pit. I knew two vitally important things that I had to share with others. On one hand, heaven is real. On the other, hell is just as real. I know many people who do not believe in either place, and I knew it would become my mission to show them the reality of the afterlife. 14. There are disobedient Christians. The Lord touched my head and took my hand, leading me down a dark tunnel. And we emerged on another rough road that ran very far and into the edge of the pit. This mountain road led through tall trees and huge rocks. When we got to the top, I looked out over a brown and lifeless valley. Everywhere there was brown. The whole region seemed to be filled with dead grass. I noticed multitudes of people who were wearing sand-colored robes roaming aimlessly in the vicinity of the pit's yawning mouth. Their heads were hanging low, and they looked very dejected and hopeless. Who are these people, Lord? I asked. They are disobedient Christians. How long will they have to stay in this barren, lifeless place? Forever, my daughter. The only ones who will enter my kingdom are the pure of heart, my obedient children. He went on to explain. Many who call themselves Christian do not live by my word, and some of them think that going to church once a week is enough. They never read my words, and they pursue worldly things. Some who even know my words never have their heart with me. The whole plan and purpose of God was beginning to clarify in my thinking. I remembered how Jesus had warned that it is hard to enter his kingdom, and now I had an inkling of what that meant. My daughter, my word says that it is hard to enter the kingdom of heaven, but so few really believe this and understand its importance. I am revealing this to you so you can warn them. He explained. As if to reiterate the importance of his message, the Lord took me to the beautiful castles I had seen earlier. As we got closer to these dwellings, I could see the streets were paved with the finest gems. It's true, heaven's streets are paved with solid gold. 15. Huge Fires Bursting The next day, March 3rd, was filled with many new God-given experiences. I looked toward the ocean, and I noticed that its water had turned to blood once more. Again, I saw people running on the beach. These were not casual joggers. They were running in fear and panic. The panorama before us helped me understand what they were running from. To my left, the mountains and the buildings situated on each mountainside were all ablaze. Next, I noticed huge fires bursting forth everywhere. People were on fire. Some were jumping into the ocean for relief. But when they stepped into the water, they would fall because of the fire. Everyone had become a human torch. I began to scream in horror and compassion for those I saw. The bloody ocean had turned into a cauldron of blazing brimstone. It was futile anyway, for there was no escape from the scorching enemy that threatened to devour them. They could not flee to the mountains because they were engulfed in flames. No place was safe. I was screaming the whole time, and I began to sob, Lord, what is happening? 
You must remember, my daughter, that I am showing you these things, so you will be able to let everyone know what is going to happen soon. When will this happen, Lord? After I bring my children home. Many people do not believe my word. That's why I want you to write a book that describes your experiences with me. I want the whole world to see this book, and I want them to realize that I am ready for them. I love all my children, but I cannot bring them to my kingdom if they are not ready for me. I will never force my children to do anything if they don't have a heart for me. I have been planning for you to do this work for a long time, because my kingdom is completely ready now. Sixteen. My parents and brothers were in hell. It was so hard to look into the pit of hell, but immediately my attention was directed toward a figure who was waving at me. Through the smoky haze, I could determine that the person was a woman. Then I heard her voice. She was speaking in my native Korean tongue, and she began to scream, "Hot, hot!" I remember so clearly her eyes and my eyes meeting, and she began to scream. My very own mother was screaming for help from the gaping pit of Hades. My heart stopped. A knife of cold, hopeless stabbed at my heart. My mother was in hell. I felt as if the boulder I was sitting on was on top of me. I wanted so desperately to reach out and take my mother's hand. So that I could lift her from the licking tongues of fire that swirled all around her, it was the worst moment of my life. There is no word in the dictionary that truly identifies what I felt at that moment. It was a mixture of fear, desperation, hurt, terror, sadness, and hopelessness. Then I realized that these were the very emotions that my mother would have to experience throughout all eternity. My mother had died when she was forty, but her face looked the same as I had remembered her. She was a beautiful woman, but her expression reflected the torment she was experiencing in the pit. I knew that these things had been made impossible because of her choices in life. I knew that I could not help her. That even the Lord could not help her, because she didn't know Him. She didn't know anything about the Lord, because no one had ever preached to her. It is not knowing the Lord that leads a person into hell. And this is why I want to tell the whole world about the pit I saw, and the wonderful kingdom of heaven. Next, I saw my father, my stepmother, and a close friend. Who had died when she was only nineteen? They were all in hell. He broke the silence. The reason I am showing this to you, my daughter, is so that you will fully understand that no matter how good people are, they will go to hell if they do not accept me. I want to see as many souls saved as possible before I return to gather my church unto myself. My father loves all of his children. When I saw your loved ones, I felt deeper pain than you did. But I must live by my father's word. Once a person goes to hell, there is no way for them to ever get out again. I want the unsaved to know this: the reality of hell is forever. I love every one of my children, but I cannot force anyone to love me or obey me. If they will open their hearts to me, then I can help them to believe in me and love me. I want to save as many souls as possible. I want believers everywhere to preach the gospel. This is most important to me. The last days are truly upon us. The Lord's patience has not been most gracious up until now, but He is getting ready to come again to receive His children to Himself. And it is then that the people who remain on earth will truly experience hell before they end up in the fiery inferno of everlasting destruction. My job is to warn the whole world about these events, that they are just around the corner. Seventeen, sin and don't repent before they die. 
he took me to another high mountain, from which I looked down into another endless valley, where a multitude of people dressed in gray-colored robes were wandering about in an apparent mood of dejection. Their robes reminded me of the gowns worn by hospital patients. The people looked weak and lost, and their gray faces matched the color of the robes that they were wearing. They stared at the ground in front of their feet as they walked around in circles, aimlessly and hopelessly. This place was mostly men with just a few women. Who are these people, Lord? They are the sinful Christians. What is going to happen to them? I wondered around. Most of them will go to the lake of fire after the judgment. I wondered why these people were here, and then I remembered that their valley leads to the burning pit. These so-called Christians who don't really know the Lord, and who continually and willfully sin and don't repent before they die, or before the rapture happens, will be eternally lost. 18. Chu Nam's House in Heaven I wondered where he was leading me. He took my hand and began walking. He took me to the castle we went to yesterday. I saw a gold plate on the front door. It had a name inscribed on it, and I quickly realized that it was my name. I almost fainted with surprise. Written in fancy lettering was the name Chu Nam. This was the place Jesus had prepared for me. I was amazed. It was too good to be true. Here I was, standing at the door of a regal palace in heaven, and my name was inscribed in gold on its beautiful door. It was too much to take in. My head reeled in astonishment. How could these things be? I cried tears of gratitude and joy as my heart overflowed with love and adoration for the Lord. I had never really anticipated such wonderful things from Him. I had always felt that if He simply noticed me, it would be okay. But now He literally was showing His blessings on me. I had tasted the living water, and I knew I would never thirst again. I had tasted the purple fruit of paradise, and I could never hunger for the things of the world again. I had been with Jesus my Lord and Master, and He had taken me to the mansion He had made for me. I wept openly as the Lord led me into the house. He said, Don't cry, my daughter. I want you to be happy. As we stepped across the threshold of the mansion, spiritual songs welled up from my heart, and I continued to cry tears of joy and gratitude. I was struck by the sparkling stone walls that lined the corridor of my mansion. I loved the red and cream-colored carpet with its round patterns. The red velvet chairs, so classic and sophisticated, were like the ones I had always wanted in my home. The red draperies were the finest I'd ever seen. The Lord took his seat on one of the velvet chairs as I walked up the majestic stairway savoring every single moment in my mansion. The bedroom was carpeted in pure white, and I noticed that the headboard of the bed was silver with blue stones embedded decoratively along its border. 19. My children are not ready for me. As we left and walked over the Golden Bridge, we went back to the white building. Chunam, I have prepared everything for my children. I am in a hurry for everything because my kingdom has been ready for a long time, but so many of my children are not ready for me. I know it's tiring for you because they love the world too much. That is why I want you to write a book for me. I know it's tiring for you, but this work has to be done soon. 20. When will you come for us? When will you come for us? I asked again, hoping for a more precise, definitive response. I told you it will be soon. Didn't you see that everything is already prepared for everyone here? That 
I then knew, was precisely why the Lord had taken me to heaven so many times, so that I could see that He had almost completed His work. The time of His return is truly at hand. This is the burning message that must be told. This is the theme of my book and my life. Jesus wants everyone to know that the end is coming. He has already prepared an eternal home for all who believe in Him. It is no longer accurate to say that He is preparing a place for us because the place is already prepared. 21. Enjoyable Life to Kingdom the Lord and I sat. God told me this. I have made so many of the things here similar to the things on earth, so that my children can enjoy them when they come to my kingdom. But there are many things that are not the same as things on earth. I have so many exciting surprises for my children. 22. Turn Hell into Paradise In fact, when the creation took place, Human beings were to live in a paradise more wonderful than any we can possibly imagine. The Garden of Eden, a place of purity, innocence, perpetual springtime, fruitfulness, peace, and joy. But because human beings sinned, we were banned from that earthly paradise. God, in His great love, however, made a way for us to regain paradise in heaven. He sent His Son to die for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Paradise lost what was regained through the death and resurrection of His Son. The more I study the book of Genesis, the more I realize that the Garden of Eden was a replica of heaven on earth. It is the kind of existence God wants His children to enjoy. There was no death, pain, suffering, darkness or disease in Eden, and there will certainly be none in our heavenly home. I began to realize it is not surprising that our heavenly home will be like the most fantastic places of earth, the oceans, forests, fields, trees, flowers, birds, animals, fruits, and rivers are there for us to enjoy just as God had created them for us in Eden. But through faith in Jesus Christ, paradise will one day be restored to each of us. Won't it be wonderful there? He then said, Chunam, you see the kingdom has many of the things that you know on earth. When all my children come to my kingdom, I want them to enjoy the things I've prepared for them. The Lord continued, My children will be pleased, and that is why I've told them to give up the worldly things in order to please me. They can have anything they need while they are on earth if they are obedient to me. I want their hearts to put me first, and I want them to live pure lives because I love all of them and want to bring them here. 23. God's Choice I choose my children who are pure and obedient, those who put me first in their lives. You are trying so very hard to please me, but you must remember, I look only at the hearts of my children. You think like a human being. My thinking is different from yours. 24. Many of them have doubts about heaven. I want my children to read this book because so many of them have doubts about heaven. I want them to believe there is a heaven and to live pure and obedient lives so they can come into my kingdom. 25. He frequently reiterates these important messages. Usually the Lord does not talk much when He visits me, except when He wants to tell me important things about my life and ministry. He frequently reiterates these important messages. For example, he has told me over and over again that he will be coming soon. He often has repeated the fact that his kingdom is already prepared for his children. He has told me many times to stop worrying, but to be patient and to trust him. 26. God will not bless them. 
Whoever lives dishonestly and does not respect my words are people I will not bless, even if they are your loved ones. Daughter, I want you to think about those you have been praying for, those you know, and I want you to think of which prayers I've answered. Some will never change their hearts to become pure, and they will never be blessed. Many Christians are poor, and many have problems in their lives because their hearts are not right with me, and they don't tithe. Any Christian who doesn't tithe will not be blessed because they love money more than my word. Those who love money more than my word will never see my kingdom. 27. Rapture Described I am coming for my children much sooner than most people expect. Will all the Christians live in houses like the one that has my name on the door when they get to heaven? I will bring many of my children to the kingdom, but not every one will live in mansions like this one that had your name on the door. These mansions are for my very special children. Lord, will all the Christians go with you when you come for us? I am going to show you something, the Lord answered instantly. I want you to remember all that you see. I want the whole world to know what is going to happen soon. I know many Christians do not believe what my prophets are telling them. That is why I am showing this to you. The air was filled with white moving objects. As the vision clarified, I saw people wearing white robes flying through the air. People were popping out of the earth everywhere and flying up into the air. The sky was literally filled with flying people, like birds in migration. I had heard the rapture described before, but I had never imagined what an amazing spectacle it would be. I wondered what those who do not know Jesus would think when they observe such a scene. I was shocked and excited, but I'm sure they will be terrified. This was the biggest surprise the Lord had ever shown me. It was the most awe-inspiring thing I'd ever seen human beings flying through the air like birds. They soared upward with rocket-like speed. Some seemed to be soaring like kites in the wind on a clear, beautiful day. I saw my one-year-old granddaughter. She was wearing a white robe, and her hair had grown to shoulder length. She looked pretty grown up. At first, I saw her at her house in normal clothing. Then, suddenly, she was wearing a white robe and flying through the air. I was dumbfounded by the vision. It certainly seemed to confirm that the Lord would be returning in the very near future. Then, I saw my daughter's ten-month-old daughter. She does not have much hair right now, but in the vision her hair was down to her shoulders and like my other granddaughter, she was flying through the air. I felt the Lord had a good reason for showing the children to me. First, I'm sure He wanted me to know that they will be with God in heaven to enjoy all eternity with Jesus. Second, I knew He wanted me to see how old they would be when He returns. It is sooner than most people think. 28. Did not ascend with the others. The joyous vision changed. I saw the people who did not ascend with the others. Places on earth had been disrupted. Some had been turned upside down. It was noisy everywhere, and people were in an obvious state of panic. Terror was ridden on every face. People were running wildly. Total pandemonium reigned. It seemed as if each person was searching for someone or something that they could not find. I began to cry like a little child as I watched people running down the streets. They were screaming and yelling. Some were trying to throw what few belongings they possessed into vehicles such as cars and boats. Thousands of boats were on the ocean. People were trying to escape. Many men in uniforms were storming houses, ransacking them and taking the belongings they found. I noticed one family of four or five lying on the floor of a house. Most of them were on their stomach, and a pool of blood covered the floor. 
hundreds of people were fleeing on foot to the mountains. As they did, the uniformed guards fired guns at them, and several fell. Those nearest the guards were beaten with clubs and sticks. I saw people destroying churches. A man threw a rock at a beautiful stained glass window that showed Jesus with his lambs. The window shattered and glass flew in all directions. I screamed more loudly. One woman who appeared to be looking for a lost child was running through her house, shouting in panic and fear. She kept calling her child's name as she jumped up and down in total frustration and desperation. I wanted to help her, but there was nothing I could do. I cried and cried for her and for all the others. Then I saw a family I know personally. The father ran into his house and rushed from room to room calling the names of his wife and children. He found one member of his family, and they sat huddled in a corner of a room. I know who they are, but I am not at liberty to mention their names in this book. The vision eventually vanished, and I continued to cry. The Lord wiped my tears. Daughter, he said, I must show you these things so you can tell the whole world what is going to happen. I love all my children and I want them to realize I am coming for them soon. But I cannot bring those who don't live according to my word, because they are not ready for me. Many Christians will be surprised when the end times come. What you just saw is only a small part of what will happen very soon. It will be much worse than you can possibly imagine for those who do not know me. That is why I want all my children to be able to come with me to my kingdom. Daughter, I have shown you part of the kingdom and the things that are going to happen in this world because the time is short. I will return soon. That is why this book is so very important to me. It is for my children. You have seen what is going to happen on earth in the very near future. I am ready for my children. But so many of my children do not really believe, and they are living for worldly things. I love all of them, and want to bring all of them to heaven with me. But I cannot take those who are not ready for me. Those who come to my kingdom must be pure-hearted and obedient. 29. Heaven or Hell? I believe his second coming is so near that he is letting his people know how much he loves them and that he wants his church to be ready for him. God loves you, and this is the greatest truth in the entire world. That is why he has already prepared his kingdom for you. Even though he loves his children, he is angry towards those who do not believe. After all, heaven is a choice. The Lord does not want anyone to end up in the pit of hell. If you believe, you will have eternal life with the Lord. If you do not believe, you will find yourself in the place of torment where my parents and countless others have to endure all eternity. It is a personal choice. It is God's way versus Satan's way. It is the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of darkness. It is life versus death. It is heaven versus hell. Which will win in your life? The choice is yours. Every word in this book is true. The words of Jesus have been transcribed exactly as he said them to me. The Lord chose me for this work, and I have endeavored to be faithful to every word and experience. My deepest desire is for everyone to find his name on a mansion door in heaven. 30. Tithes and God's Blessing Many Christians have many problems because of their disobedience to the Lord about tithes, offering and giving to the needy. They still live the same way they did before they were saved. I have studied many people who give tithes and offerings, and these included my son and daughter and my friends. Those who tithe and give offerings have lives that are continually blessed in every area. Conversely, those who don't tithe, 
even though they are going to church and do many things for God's work, often find that their lives are never really blessed, and they continually have problems. The Lord is very unhappy with people who are not tithing. The Lord showed and told me clearly that whoever doesn't tithe will not see His face because they love money more than Him. The tithe is 10% of whatever your gross pay is, not net pay. God doesn't need our money, but He wants every believer to bring the tithe to His house so the church can do God's work. Offerings are love gifts for the needy and a giving thanks to God's house and different areas of ministry. All of God's work requires money. Anyone who is able to do these things faithfully will be blessed by Almighty God the most because it is obedient and shows love. These two things are very important commands of God. If you truly want to be with Jesus forever in heaven and have a blessed life while you are on this earth, please pay close attention to what the Lord says. Finally, Jesus coming for us is so near. My coming for my people is so near. I try to save as many souls as I can no matter what it takes. Satan knows this, and he is trying to destroy as many souls as he can before they are saved. People should realize why so many people are dying now. Every church must cast out the devil continually by prayer. My churches have been too comfortable. I am very dissatisfied with many of them. I want the whole world to know that I am a fearsome God. I love my children, and that is why I died for them. I must be first in everyone's life. Everyone needs to repent and be humble before me. What happened to New York is a very small price to pay. There will be a great distraction in this world continually until I come for my people. That day is sooner than they expect.